again to our Victory in Truth television broadcast brought to you on FGE Gospel Television. This broadcast is brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that is dedicated to bringing the gospel, to bringing the word of God to as many people as possible. Let me greet all my friends that are watching us live on Facebook, on YouTube and other social media sites. I greet you in the wonderful and the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whether you are watching us live or watching a recording of this later on, I believe that God is going to touch your life. Something is going to happen to you. I believe in the power of the Word of God to transform and to change the lives of the people. Well, I'm going to go straight in to the Word of God and please share it. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, please share it. Even if you're watching the recording and watching it on YouTube, then please share these videos and help us to get the Word of God out to as many people as possible. We can do more when we work together. Well, I'm going to go straight now into the Word of God because I'm going to share a message that God gave to me today as I was thinking about what to say. And it, it was a very tough message. And I know the message that I'm going to bring is not going to make you run around and shout hallelujah, but it's a message that needs to be said. I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. The title of the message I want to bring to you today is Get Serious About God. Get serious about God. We are living in the end time. You've only got to see what is happening in the world today. Prophecies after prophecies are being fulfilled. The world is getting more and more wicked. We, the devil knows that his time is short and he's trying to get as many people to serve him as possible. That is why we are seeing an increase in evil in the world today, all kinds of abomination. When I was a child, they used to say, don't go out at night, it's dangerous. But now it's dangerous to go out any time of the day. People are being mugged, they're being killed in broad daylight. They're being stabbed to death, acid attacks, sexual perversion that is sweeping across the nation. And it is a hate crime to stand up and say what God's position on marriage, God's position on certain things. It is a hate crime to do so. The world is getting more and more evil as we go on. And I tell you, friends, it's time that we stop playing church. It's time that we stop playing about with the things of God. It's now time to get serious. If you're going to be a Christian, be a true Christian. Be one that is sold out to him. God is God doesn't accept people that are half-hearted. We need to be fully persuaded. We need to be fully submitted. We need to be fully in the service of the living God. It's no time now for Sunday Christians. 
It's no time now for the Sunday midweek service Christians. God is calling us to be holy seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It is time to take things serious. The time has come for Christians to be serious about their salvation. And it's time for pastors to get back to the Bible. How sad it is today in some churches, the Bible is only given 10 minutes or 15 minutes at the most. I think it's sad that the, the Bible is taken so lightly. We see Christians today living like unbelievers, telling the same jokes, going to the same place of entertainment. I heard a preacher once on the radio say, there is no difference between the Christians and the ungodly, only we are forgiven. There's no difference, he said. I tell you, friends, there, is, there better be a difference. Because Jesus, God did not send his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross so that we can carry on living like the world. He came to change us. There better be a difference. And if you are truly born again, truly born again, there's a lot, the word born again in most churches doesn't mean what the Bible says. It just means they go to church, but that's not what the Bible teaches. There better be a difference. If you are born again, there's going to be a difference. The places you used to go, that you go there no more. The things you used to do, you do them no more. The way you used to dress, you don't dress that way no more. Everything that you do when you become a Christian is to the honour and the glory of the living God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 It says, And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Things change when you become a Christian. If there's no change in your life, you did meet Jesus. Believe me, if you're telling those same churchy jokes, and you don't feel bad about it, you didn't meet, you did, You never met Jesus. You might have met religion, you might have met a church, but you never met Jesus. Because when you meet Jesus, and you experience the new birth, there's going to be a change in your life, there's going to be a change in your conversation, there's going to be a change in the way that you live. In Acts 14, 13, referring to the religious people, the Pharisees, it says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been to Jesus. Do people, when you go to workplace, do they know you're a Christian? The only way, some, the only way you know some people are Christians is because they tell you they're a Christian. I remember years ago, we'd only just got married and we were living in Paddington. And I had one of these neighbours, man, he used to use every, the F word, the B word. He was smoking, he was, he was the mouth loudest, profane person you've ever met. And one day he said to me, you're a Christian. So I said, yes. I said, he said, so am I. So am I. I said, you are? He said, well, don't look so surprised because I'm a Christian. Well, if he didn't tell me he was a Christian, I would never know. Because nothing in the way that he lived, nothing in the way that he talked, nothing in the way that he acted ever told me that he was a Christian. And he wasn't. He wasn't. Because the Bible says, by your fruits you will know them. And if your fruit is bad, it's the tree is bad. Because a good tree brings forth good fruit. You can't live like the devil and tell me you're a Christian. I don't care if you've been baptised. I don't care what the name of your church is. If you're not living for the Lord, you are not a Christian. If an animal comes in on four legs going woof, 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 don't tell me it's a duck. If it's, bar if it's walking on all four and it looks like a dog and it make a, makes a nice like a dog, I'm going to call it a dog. And you might tell me what church you go to, but I tell you friends, if you're not, if you're not living right, if you're not talking right, if you're not acting right, and I ain't going to call you a Christian. You might be religious. You may be Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Lutheran. You might, be, you might have your name on the church roll. But I tell you, your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because when you are saved, there's going to be a difference. 
And I know this kind of preaching is not popular, but it's this kind of preaching that's going to get you to heaven. Because without holiness, no man should see God. Jesus did. If, if we could live the way that we live and still, be, and still be saved, there would have been no need for Jesus to come to die on the cross and bear our sins. He came to change us. And if you are a Christian, you're going to be changed. And there better be a change. And if you are a Christian and you're playing about with your Christianity, I warn you, friends, it's time to repent. It's time to get serious about the things of God. And as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me as well. We're talking to all of us. We all need to get serious about the things of God. I remember in 1974, when I first became a Christian, I was saved in the Healing Church of God in Christ, Forest Gate, the church is still there in Field Road. And if you're in Forest Gate, go along to that church. It's called the Healing Church of God in Christ, Field Road, Forest Gate, E7. And I was saved in that church in 1974. But I tell you, in those days, friends, it was a West Indian Pentecostal church, as it was called in those days. But I tell you, friends, when you got saved in those church, you were expected to live like a Christian, walk like a Christian. They had strict standards. You were expected to be holy. But I tell you, friends, we need to be holy. There are some churches that have got good standards. But good standards does not mean you're living holy. Oh, you can have a nice hat on your head. You can have no lipstick, no earrings. And you can look the part. But it doesn't make you a Christian. The clothes don't make the Christian. You can have standards without being a Christian. But you cannot be holy without having standards. Standards do not make holiness. But if, you've got, if you're living holy, you will have standards. You will walk right. You will talk right. You will live right. And you will act right. And people will know that you belong to Jesus Christ. Oh, friends, you, some people say it's okay to carry on drinking and cursing. I tell you, friends, it's not okay. That kind of lifestyle will lead you to hell. And any Christ, and any pastor that tells you, oh, it's okay to live like the world. It's okay to go and get drunk. It's okay to smoke. It's okay to be to, to practice sexual perversion. You can still get to heaven. No, you cannot. And I need to make it as clear as I can today. I'm not going to... I'm not going to criticise anybody or condemn anybody, but I tell you, friends, when I read my Bible, I can only find one kind of marriage in the Bible, and that is between a man and a woman. That is the only kind of marriage that I find that is acceptable to God. Oh, yes, there are other marriages that are acceptable by society. There may be other marriages that are acceptable in the country that they live in, but they are unacceptable to God. A lifestyle that is contrary to the word of God may very well be popular in society. But we are called to be different. We are called to be a peculiar people. We are called to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So I'm talking about, friends, it's time to be serious about the things of God in the world today. And I've seen it all over in Africa, in America, in the United Kingdom. It's happening around the world. We have got churches that don't have Jesus. Oh, they call upon the name of Jesus. They may sing songs, but Jesus is not in there. And you find such a church in the book of Revelation where Jesus was not in the church. And it's found in Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Let me read it. If you've got a Bible, look it up. Revelation chapter 3, 14. If you haven't got a Bible with you, make a note and look it up afterwards. It, it, this is talking about a church. And it says, Unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. 
that today is the, that, that was the last of the seven churches in Revelation. The final church on earth will be a lukewarm church. There'll be two churches. There'll be one that's on fire and the lukewarm church. They don't stand for anything. They don't stand for anything. They tell us, oh, we've got to have a relaxing service. So when the sinners come into the, into the church, they should feel comfortable. Let me tell you, friends, a sinner coming into the presence of God should never feel comfortable. Because when an ungodly man, a sinner, comes into the presence of God, they should feel the conviction. They should, feel, they should not feel comfortable because sin can never be comfortable in the presence of God. And a Christian that is practicing sin, if you, if you are practicing sin and your church makes you feel comfortable in that sin, then you're not in the right church. Because if you're living, if you're living wrong, you can never feel comfortable in the presence of a holy God. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. You know the last church is going to be a prosperity church. They're going to be the prosperity gospel. Don't we see that today? Ministers, instead of talking about holiness, they're talking about how many cars they've got, how many aeroplanes they've got, and how rich they are. And I think it's sad when I see pastors that have got so much money, and people in their congregation are starving and they won't help them. It is sad. It is sad. He said, because thou sayest I am rich. Isn't that the prosperity gospel? And increased in goods and had need of nothing. Knowest thou that thou art wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. There are preachers today that will tell you, oh, I've got this aeroplane. Or oh, I've got, I heard a preacher on television boasting about how rich he was, boasting about his Rolex watch. What has that got to do with Christianity? Nothing at all, friends. Nothing at all. They may think they may be rich in the eyes of men, but in the eyes of Almighty God, in the eyes of our holy God, they are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. You can be naked having rich clothes. You can be na You can have the most expensive clothes in the world and still be naked before God. Didn't Adam and Eve cover themselves with fig leaves? And they still had on the fig leaves, but they said we were naked. When God came, they were naked. Their fig leaf covering was no covering. And you get these people wearing 2,000, 3,000 pound suits, bragging about how much they've got, staying in the most expensive hotels in the world, coming onto the platform with more bodyguards than the President of the United States. It is an abomination. We need to get away from Hollywood style evangelism. And he said, I have counseled thee to buy gold tried with fire, that they must be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with outsoles, that thou mayest see us lay. Oh, I pray God that God will open the eyes of his people, that they will see the sin in their life, and the sin that is all around them, and do something. And look what Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Now notice, look at the verse, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. You know, preachers often preach that verse wrong. They often say, well, that's Jesus knocking at the door of the sinner, wanting to come in, asking to, uh, wait, wait, you open the door so he can come in and save you. That's not what he's talking about. When Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, he was not talking about the sinner, he was talking about the church, the church that was meeting together, singing songs, shouting praises. But Jesus was not in the midst of their service. And I tell you, friend, Jesus is not in the midst of many of our charismatic churches and many of our traditional churches today. He's not in the midst of it. They are shouting, rolling on the floor, 
preacher standing up and asking people, instead of preaching the word of God, they, pre they, they, they abuse the word of God in order to get money out of the people, asking them to come forward and make large donations. It is an abomination before God. And we need to be serious about the things of God. The modern church has become a variety show. Oh, I remember the church that I got saved in. They used to sing choruses. We'd get up and clap our hands, wave the tambourine, dance around. And now today it's become all professional. It's like being at a variety show where we sit and watch performers and give them a clap afterwards. We've got Christian comedians that they, that they hire, Christian comedians to come and entertain people. Where in the Bible do you find Christian comedians coming to church? Where do you find it? Christianity is not a joke. It's not something to be laughed about. It's something that we should be taking serious. And then we've got professional dancers. That really agrees me. We got these professional dancers where they where they do their choreography and come on and dance across the platform. You don't find that in the Bible. It's an abomination. You know when I was when when I got saved in nineteen in the, in the nineteen seventies, we used to dance. But we didn't have that kind of. We used to, as the music we'd jump up and down and play. We didn't have professional dancers, choreography and all that kind of junk that's brought in the church. It's more like watching some kind of variety show on television. These things should not be. And if you're in a church like that, you're not in a church. If you go to a place like that on Sunday where they got these things, you're not in a church. You're in a nightclub. You're in a variety show. And you need to get out of it. Someone's got to say it. We've got worldly music dressed up as Christianity. Which is nothing more than wolves in sheep's clothing. We've even got churches that have got disco type lighting where they flash it around and turn it down and, and in darkness. Why? Because men love darkness because their deeds are evil. That was not in the Bible. It's an abomination. I'll tell you, friends, there are some there are some churches that have made the church so much like the world you can't tell the difference. What do they do? They bring people out of the world and bring them into a worldly church and they they take them up from being lost in the world, and now they're lost in the church. So they take them out of the world, bring them into the church, and entertain them to keep them there. And there's no mention of sin. There's no mention of the word of God. In fact, the word of God is often left out. Some churches only have about 10 minutes of preaching. You can call it preaching. It is sad. We need to get back to the word of God and get rid of them. Oh, I've seen some really weird things come into the church today that some people need to speak out against it. I remember about 20 years ago, we had the holy laughter thing, which called the Toronto Blessing. This holy laughter, where a preacher would stand up and burst out laughing. People would roll on the floor laughing, and they call it a new anointing. It weren't a new anointing. It was just abomination. It was a ridicule. It was mockery unto the living God. You don't find those things in the Bible. Very only laugh, a preacher standing there, oh, he was so anointed he couldn't stop laughing. That's rubbish. That's nonsense. People And people were on the floor, barking like a dog, plucking like a chicken, and called it a new anointing. No, it wasn't, friends. And there were pastors that were closing down their church, travelling all the way to Toronto, taking their members there, and seeking a new blessing. And somebody said to me, Pastor McKibbit, this is the new anointing that's going to sweep across the world and people are going to get saved. I said, no, it won't. It will die out. And it did. It's hardly ever mentioned today. There was no great revival come through it because God was not in it. I've even heard of some churches in there that have, that have wrestling matches with fake blood to entertain the people, to bring them in the church. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was reading about a church in America where they were giving beer. Giving beer to people. Serving beer to bring people into the church. And the pastor would be standing there preaching, drinking drink, drinking beer. I tell you, friends, these kind of things are an abomination. I am glad to be Pentecostal. I'm glad of the Pentecostal message. But some of the times what I see go on in Pentecostal churches and charismatic churches, it grieves me. Because it's an abomination unto God. 
and we need to get back to the word of God. We need we need to get back to preaching. The prosperity message has replaced holiness. Instead of people pursuing holiness, now they are pursuing get rich schemes and making money and but and preachers have got the biggest some of these preachers are the biggest scammers going. They will tell you, oh, you want to get rich, you've got to plant that thousand dollar seed faith. You've got to plant that thousand dollar seed faith. And that and prosperity and people are seeking new houses, new cars. Where in the seventh that's when I got saved, people weren't seeking those things. They were seeking holiness. They were pursuing holiness. It was expected that when a Christian got saved, he would live for God. God help us. Let me get back to the things of God. The church today needs a cleansing. The, the church as a whole, the individual Christians as a whole, they need a temple cleansing. The type that took place when Jesus went into the temple. Let me read to you Matthew chapter 21 verse 12. The tem it was a temple of God where things of God should have been practiced, but things that come into the temple that should not have been brought in. And there are things in the church today that have been brought in that shouldn't be there. And there are Christians that are bringing things into their life that they shouldn't be they shouldn't be bringing into their life. They are reading books they shouldn't be reading, reading magazines, pornographic magazines that they shouldn't be reading, watching programs on television that they shouldn't be watching. Now I'm not saying it's wrong to have a television, I've got one, but you need to what you need to be careful what you watch on there. You need to be careful the kind of people that you mix with, the kind of books that you read. And when Jesus went into the temple, there were things in the temple that were not should not have been there. And when you get the things in the temple, in your body, in your life, that shouldn't be there, you will find the things that should be there are missing. Because if there's sin in your life, God can't be, God is not in your life. You need to change, you need to get rid of the things in your life. We need to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and cleanse the temple. It, when Jesus went into the temple at that time, there, nobody was get, going to the temple to be healed. There were no demons cast out. No lives were changed. It's a bit like the modern church today. Nothing is happening in the church. Why? Because Jesus is not in the church. And in Matthew 21 verse 12, it says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all the them that sold and brought into the temple and overthrew the money changers and the seats that sold doves. I tell you, friends, we need to turn over and get rid of the things in our life that should not be there. And if you're a pastor, you need to get rid of the things in your church that should not be there. Many years ago, a pastor came to my house to speak to me and we were talking about certain things and he had brought things into the church that shouldn't have been brought in the church and I spoke to him for a long time and i never forget what he said he said Pastor McGee I know you're right but if I get rid of those things the people would leave let me tell you friends it's best for them to leave and have God with you than have the people there and know God we need to be bold. We need to be strong. Be, be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. The righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursueth them. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. What has the church become today? A den of thieves. Preacher standing up there, preaching and using pulpit psychology and emotions to try to get you to take the money out of your purse and put it in their wallet. They stand up there and they brag about their Rolex watches and how rich they are and they've still got the audacity to ask you for an offering, telling you, the biggest scam going, telling you that if you give to them, you're going to get rich. That is a scam. Don't fall for it no longer. Yes, you should support, pay your tithes. Yes, you should support the work of God. Yes. But I'd say, friend, don't seek prosperity, seek holiness. Seek righteousness, seek the kingdom of God. And then all the other things that you need will come your way. 
Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And you know what happened? Before Jesus cleansed the temple, there were nobody getting healed, nobody getting saved. But when Jesus got rid of the things in the temple that should not be in the temple, something happened. Something happened. What happened? And it's found in Matthew 21, 14. Matthew 21, 14, it says, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. When the, when the temple was cleansed, when the things, when they got serious about the things of God, when the things that shouldn't have been there were removed, then the healing power of God was released. God is holy and he dwells in holiness. You're not going to have God in your life if you're walking in sin and walking in ungodliness and spending more time lusting after everything you shouldn't be lusting after and doing things you shouldn't be doing. God is a holy God and God dwells where there is holiness. A holy life is better than a thousand shouts. Oh yes friends, we've got people that go into a sermon, go into a church, they hear a message, they will say, preach it, brother, preach it, brother, amen it. They will preach it and say, amen it. They will pray for the sick and shout, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. They will shout, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. They will shout, fire, fire, fire. But I tell you, friends, they are no substitute for a holy life. When you're living holy, when you're living righteous, something will happen. You don't need all those things. Peter and John were living holy. They were living righteous. And when they went into the temple and they met the man at the gate, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. He didn't start running around shouting the blood of Jesus. He didn't start shouting fire. He didn't do all those things. You know why? He was living holy. And he had God in him. Because when you're living holy, the holy God is living in you. And he was able to say, such as I have. He had it. Because he was living holy. And when you get rid of the things that shouldn't be there, God comes into your life. That's why I say a holy life is better than a thousand shouts. Friends, it's really time, really time that you and I, me as well, I'll include myself, that we need to get serious about the things of God. You can be praying for your healing. You can be praying for your health. You can be praying for a job. But the Bible says if we harbour iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. The time is short. Jesus could come at any moment. So many prophecies have been fulfilled. Evil is all over the world. There's coming a time when Jesus will come. We need to prepare for heaven. We need to take the things of God seriously. There's a telephone number that you can call us on. It's there. 07778690931. We'd love to pray for you and help you in your Christian life. Please share this message because it's important that we get this message out to as many people as possible. It's time to be serious about the things of God. Well, we've come to the end of this broadcast and I hope it's challenged you. I hope it's blessed you. And I look forward to seeing you again and until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. I love you, but my Jesus, he loves you more. God bless you. Till we meet again. Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in him, you shall be saved. God's God's free gift to you. 
is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord.